from him? Not a single word. We've been having a line in for him all afternoon, but it seems they can't locate him. Here, drink this. I've been keeping alive on it. But what is he doing in London all this time? When is he coming home to Paris? After all, we're only human. He can't do this to us. Call him again. Hello? Hello? Paris appelle Monsieur Paul Reynaud. Paris calling Mr. Paul Renard. Yeah, put him on. Put Renard on, Dirk. We won't be put off any longer. We know he's there. Well, if he isn't, where is he? He hasn't shown up, and I can't locate him. And as far as I know, he's been snatched by the devil. Aren't you being just a few years premature, Dirk? Oh, chief, where have you been? Why, well, Paris has been calling all day, and they'll be calling in a minute. The whole world's been calling. Paris appelle Monsieur Paul Reynaud. They refuse to give up the wine till you speak to them. I'll speak to them. Hello? Hello, Renard. What's the matter with you keeping us in the dark like this? What do you think we're made of? You're impatient, my dear Charles, very impatient. Well, of course I'm impatient. Did the loan go through? My dear Charles, you shouldn't become so excited. Think of your heart. Think of your liver. I'm not interested in my liver, but in the loan. The loan. Did you get the loan? If you have failed for us in London, you know what it means. I'm not in the habit of failing. You mean you got it? Certainly. Things couldn't be better. Well, then, why didn't you let us know? Well, because it only happened a few minutes ago. You heard. He got it. But you didn't get the loan. Why did you tell him you did? Because, my dear Dirk, you can tell wolves the truth and tigers the truth, but you must never tell sheep the truth. If you do, they'll set up the most unpleasant breeding like this. Bah! Oh, it's most unpleasant. Yes, but they turned you down here the same as in Paris. Now what's next? Go back to Paris and try to get the money again there. Paris? Why, that's the one place you shouldn't go to. Why, when this thing breaks, it'll rip the town wide open. You've got to hide somewhere until the worst is over. And leave Irene to face the music by herself? How can you help her by putting your head in the noose? Who said that I was going to? I tell you, there's a way out. There always is. He has left Croydon in his plane and is flying back to Paris. Isn't it? Look here, Chief. Please turn back. I tell you, you're speeding 200 miles an hour to ruin and jail. This thing has gotten too big. Not even you can beat it. Even if you think you can, don't be a bullhead. Tell the pilot to take us back and we'll. What's the matter? Afraid like the others? Ah, it's not myself. I'm nobody. Nothing can happen to me but it's you. You know, Dirk, I really think you would care if something happened to me, wouldn't you? Well, of course. After all. I've been through a lot with you in ten years. Now, this Paris. We've still got time to turn back, Chief. I tell you, there's still a way out. Yes, of course. Of course there is. I knew there was. What is it? Honesty. It never occurred to me to try it. Honesty is my ace in the hole. The point is this. You gentlemen are going to lend me 100 million francs. Oh, no. He's mad. 100 million francs? Why doesn't he ask for a billion? We thought you called us here because you had something sensible to say, Renard. Well, there isn't a man in this room who hasn't already refused you a credit of one franc more. Which is precisely why we are aware of your situation. Monsieur Lamartine, how much of my securities do you hold as collateral for my loans? 50 million francs. And you? The same. Fifty million. Monsieur? Twelve million. In your vaults, gentlemen, you hold my collaterals for loans to me in the sum of two hundred millions. Some of those securities are very good. But unfortunately, most of them are forged. They're not worth the paper they're written on. You're joking, Renard. In all honesty, those securities are forged. Forged? He's ruined me! You thief! You shouldn't get us nowhere! Monsieur Lamartine is quite right. You'll get nowhere if you act like children. And now.
Now, monsieur, I think it is obvious that you're going to lend me 100 million francs. I think it's obvious that we are not. We shall deliver you over to the police. And deliver your stockholders over to ruin. As practical men, you should know that your one chance of remaining solvent yourselves is to keep me solvent. Well, gentlemen, what are you going to do? We can't settle such an important question on the spur of the moment. No, 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 naturally not. I, uh, I think I'm reasonably safe for a few hours. Uh, may I suggest that you send me word of your decision before midnight? Very well. Before midnight. Good. And now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I'll leave. I've been away for some time, and this happens to be my wedding anniversary. And I'm naturally anxious to see my wife. Good night. Madame, will you wear the pink negligee? Which is the most wicked? The black, of course. I'll wear the black. Nene. Massage my head a little, will you? Ah, oh, that's wonderful, Inez. A man's hands could never be so gentle. Oh, Paul, I didn't see you. <laughs> oh, confess, you thought it was your lover. I didn't. It was. Your flowers were lovely. You liked them. But I didn't like your being so late. I know, my darling, but I couldn't help it. I've had a very hard day. Oh, my poor angel. It's curious that you should use that word. Because while I was flying back here, a strange thing happened. An angel, an actual angel, flew into the plane, crying bitterly, and then flew out again. <laughs> well... I collected his tears, because I thought you might like to see them. Oh, Paul! For our first wedding anniversary. Paul! Oh. oh, thank you, darling. Oh, telephones, the enemies of romance. I'll answer it for you, dear. Oh, Paul! Don't make any engagements. I forgot to tell you. The Lamartines are giving a special anniversary party for us tonight. The Lamartines? Uh huh. Oh, how very charming of them. Hello? Oh, it's nice of you to call. But, my dear fellow, that's quite impossible. I'm going out tonight with my wife. I say you've got to see us at once. You tricked us. We checked up on that London business and you never did get that loan. I really can't discuss the matter with you any longer now. Everything will be settled by morning. In fact, by midnight. Good night. Is something wrong? Strange. Very strange. What? Fear. That man I was talking to on the telephone was frightened. Of what? I've never been afraid of anything in my life. I don't know what it means to be frightened. But I do, when you look like that. You? You frightened of me? Yes, often. When you get that strange look, that crazy look in your eyes. Oh, never look like that again, please, never. Oh, my darling. My darling. I never will. I 
may need you later. Stay close to the bar. That won't be hard. Bonsoir, Monsieur Renard. Bonsoir, Madame. Bonsoir, Georges. Did you sell your aeroplane shares? I won't until you tell me, Monsieur. Better take a profit. I'm not infallible, you know. Monsieur Renard. Good evening. Good evening, Andre. How are you, Grace? Irene, will you sit there? Paul, you sit here. That's Chenard's wife. A year ago, she sang here professionally. How is Madame Lamartine this evening? How are you, Adrienne? Well, I seem to be more settled than you are. Only yesterday I read you were in New York. Or was it Hong Kong? Both. I travel by magic car. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you get more wicked looking all the time. Uh, and your wife more beautiful. Well, that's just as it should be, isn't it? Think what a world this would be if husbands became more beautiful and wives more wicked. Oh. <laughs> we did so want to help you and Irene celebrate tonight, Paul. I'm so glad that you returned from London in time to make it possible. I'm glad myself. Only, uh, I seem to miss an old friend of mine named Monsieur Lamartine. Oh, he'll be here soon. He was detained. Uh, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, just a little business problem. I'm sure he'll solve it quickly and successfully. A toast with our first glass of wine to the first marriage anniversary of the most fascinating couple in Paris. May I have this dance, Madame Rina? Oh, please pardon me. I claim the privilege of the first dance with my wife tonight. That is, if she will dance with me. I might. Paul, you seem nervous about something. How do you know? Because you're so calm. What is it? Can't you tell me? Darling, you really expect me to talk business when I'm holding you in my arms. This is Hila Martin. Darling, you're holding me much too close. And I love it. Renard! Good evening. Martin. Good evening. Good evening. Monsieur Renard, I suppose I should apologize for being late. Why, certainly not to me. I understand the sudden and unexpected demands of business. They crop up all the time, don't they? Don't they, though? We must uh, pour you a glass of champagne. You might as well pour yourself one, Renard. You understand, of course, that champagne is the wine of celebration. One drinks it out of victory. Or as consolation for defeat. What are you drinking to? Honesty. Your song. Our song. Show me that you really, really 
surprise Yet I knew it was love at the start Love opened my eyes But I'm looking at you with my heart allow me to say goodnight to my wife. Impossible. Come along, please. These are the rules and they must be obeyed. Pass nothing to the prisoner and no physical contact. You are allowed five minutes. Paul, Paul. Irene, we mustn't waste any of this precious time in pity. I must talk fast. Dirk. Yes, Chief. Listen carefully. You're never to leave Madame out of your sight. Guard her with your life. I never want her to be troubled by anything. She must learn to be happy again. No, I can't. Not without you. You must learn to forget. Not me, though, Chief. Whether you're in Paris or behind the bars, I can't forget what you've done for me. Good old Dirk. Who can tell? Perhaps someday we'll go up again together. All you have to know is that somewhere I'm alive and that I still depend on you. Because I know that I can, Dirk. Anything, Chief. Anywhere. Then remember. Above all, Madame. I've got it, Chief. Irene. Irene, you mustn't go to pieces over me. Whatever happens, they can't crush me. Now and always, I am Paul Renard. I know that you have a wonderful spirit, Paul. But when I think of what you'll have to face... It will be so much easier for me to face it. Since I know that you'll get along. At least you won't have to worry about money. The jewels I gave you were worth a fortune. I give up the jewels, Paul. Everything. Tainted money. I wish you hadn't suffered from so much conscience. What are you going to do without money? Well, I'll work. I'll sing. I'll get along. But you... Oh. I'll be the honored guest of the government. A special boat with a military escort takes me to my new home, a plantation in the tropics. The penal colony. They're still afraid of me, even now. They're rushing me there tonight. Then I must go, too. I must be near you. I must be somewhere where I can be close. I forbid you to even speak of it. I won't have you sacrificed, too. I'll be an old man when I get out. If I'm not, I'll be a fugitive. I'll be no good to you either way. You're a young woman. You have your life before you. I want you to live it. And the only way you can do that is to forget me. Get me out of your mind and your heart completely. <gasps> You know that I can't forget you, that I don't want to, that I... Chief, I can't read between the lines very well, but... You don't mean to say that you want Madame to divorce you? To lose her? How else do you think I'm going to hold her for the next ten years?
If I had fool, I wouldn't be here. Oh, come on, we gotta keep trying. One, two, three, pull! Now oh, stop shamming and get up. What's the matter with him? Can't you see? Thinks it's easier to paint than to work. Come on, take him out of here. You haven't changed since you've been here, Reynard. Every man must do his share. You didn't think so when you lived off the world. Come on, get me somebody who can do the work. Be quiet. You don't give orders here, you take them. All in. Forward, march. We must apologize for the towel, monsieur. It will be changed next month. <laughs> Come forward when your names are called. Ramiero, Cheval, Delos, Malachal. The last letter I got was 17 years ago. Malachal. A bill from my tailor. Pasteur. Blanc. I don't even get a circular for my undertaker. Be quiet. I want to hear the names. Pereira. Gil. Mendes. He's delaying mine on purpose. Reynard. Ramiero. Cheval. Delos. Marichal. Pasteur. Blanc. Pereira. Gil. Mendes. Patience. What can they know? Every hour is a day, every day is a week. Every week an eternity. If only I could receive a letter. Any letter. Patience. If something doesn't happen soon, I'll... Ah, good evening, Senor Pareto. Ah, Senor Pareto, this way, please. Let me tell you something, Cap. When you're in the jungle, this is your best friend. What do they call it? Machete. Machete, huh? Dirk! Where's the drinks for table six? I don't know. They just lifted themselves off the bar and went out to get a little fresh air, I guess. You pay more attention to sailors and barflies than you do to our carriage trade. See, who do you think you are? The best bartender you ever had. And I'll tell you something more. I can get a better job just like that. Well, why don't you take it? Because your pretty brown eyes hold me in a spell. You think because the boss is sweet on your friend, Mary Irene, you're gonna run this place. Someday I'm going to fire you. No. Someday I'm going to fire you. <laughs> Amazing. And you look so much like a man. What do you mean? I mean you're not a man at all. You're an old woman. You have the longest tongue in Rio de Janeiro. Well, I didn't mean no harm. What business is it of yours? To couple men of my name with mine in public, even in private. He slipped out. It was the first time. Oh, no, it wasn't, but it's going to be the last. Now, you take my advice and leave both Madame Irene and myself out of your conversation. I assure you, senor, I have always told people there is absolutely nothing between you. Time after time, I have said you are not the kind of man to pursue a woman month after month when she wouldn't have nothing to do with you. Yes, time after time. Someday, I'm going to fire you. Thank you. of mine don't fall in love don't let the stars that shine fool you above 
broken their spell before you know how you fell before listen to me heart of mine oh be fooled once more oh heart of mine don't run away though he may seem divine hear what i say he will lead you on when you need him he'll be gone living only stars above heart of mine don't fall in love heart of mine Steeler matches the bridge is a bridge. tomorrow at six. You ought to have more important things to do. Well, I'd like to know that you're safe. You know, it was the chief's last order. And until he comes That'll back... That'll be a long time, Dirk. But we are making it easier for him. I made a few contacts with sailors and traders, and Paul's getting more tobacco. Tobacco. Letters. Memories. But at least he does know we're thinking of him. Good night, dear. Good night. I'm sure this is where she lives. Why did you? Because I wouldn't like to apologize to the wrong person. Not you. Ah, there you are. I, uh, I'm so glad you weren't hurt. I, I feel I should apologize don't, for the don't, way. Please don't steal my stuff, Madam Irene. You see before you the contrite figure of a man who has no other aim in life but to apologize to you. Oh, get him a chair. No, 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 please, please. I'll right, say it on my feet. When I stand before you, I stand... <gasps> oh. um, Maria, have you had any experience with a gentleman in this condition? Yes, with my husband, but he was no gentleman. Well, what is one supposed to do? Well, one's supposed to do nothing. They sleep it off. Cover him with something. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and leave the gate open. <laughs> Madam wants to know if you care to have a cup of coffee. 
before you leave. <laughs> oh, I see. But Anne wants to know if I'd like to have a cup of coffee before I leave. <laughs> Would you tell me something in confidence? Yes, sir. What day is this? Today. Tuesday. 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 <laughs> and uh, Madame wants to know if you I'd like to have a cup of coffee before, before you leave. <laughs> would, would you be so kind as to tell Madame that I think on this particular Tuesday, I'll just skip the cup of coffee. Oh, you don't want it. No, I don't want it. You don't want no coffee. No. I tell madam, you don't want today your coffee. I don't tell her. You don't want it. Madam wants to know if I want a cup of coffee. Madam wants to know if I want a cup of coffee. Shh. Quiet. Madam wants to know if I want a cup of coffee. Good morning. Sure you don't want a cup of coffee before you go? No, no, I, I think I'll just... A uh, cup of coffee will do you a lot of good, I'm sure. Well, now that you mention it, I, uh, I might possibly use a little brandy. Brandy always comes off the coffee. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, it certainly is a relief for a change to have a nice, quiet family breakfast with no poor relations or strangers around, isn't it, dear? Uh, well, uh, yes, it's such a relief. Aren't you curious to know how you got here? <laughs> well, yes, as a matter of fact, I am, but I don't know, something tells me I'd better not ask. You came here to apologize. I did. Mm. Well, don't tell me for what. All right, I won't. Hot biscuits. <laughs> Hot biscuits. <laughs> you know, you ought to teach that maid not to giggle in the morning. Giggling's bad enough at any time, but in the morning, it's positively immoral. Positively. You're not listening to a word I'm saying. Oh, yes, I am. Not a word. We might as well really be married. Well, I was wondering about you. About me? Oh. Yes, Gregory is the name. William T. Gregory. Male, white, American, and repulsively handsome. In case you couldn't tell by looking at me. I can tell much more than that by looking at you. You can? What can you tell? You don't care much about women. You don't care much about men. You don't care much about anything. But I'm sure there must have been a time when you cared a great deal about everything. You know, for a minute, Senora, I thought that I was going to get my coffee and biscuits and my drink for nothing. Not even for the story of my downfall. Oh, yes. It was too much to expect. Well, I didn't ask for anything. Oh, no, no, I know, I know. Well, I'll be a good sport. I'll come through. You see, it was like this. Once, I was the happiest man in the world. And I lived in a little rose-covered cottage with the sweetest, dearest, prettiest wife that any man ever had. Fifty years we traveled life's road together, and never a cross word. And at night, she used to sit under a lamp and play and play the piano. And when she was through playing, I used to tune the piano. Oh, that was my profession, you know. I was a piano tuner. Oh, yes. In fact, I think I can safely say without boasting that I was, I was a very prominent piano tuner. Probably the most prominent piano tuner in the United States. <laughs> Why, people used to bring their pianos on their backs for miles just to have me tune them. <laughs> oh, yes, I was rolling in gold. Of course, not in public, mind you. Oh, no. No, I was too smart for that. But in the evening, when the shades were drawn, I used to get out my gold and roll in it. <laughs> just roll in it. But then, but then came that dreadful day. Yes. What day? The day when the radio was born. 
The day when the American people discovered that they'd rather listen to static in the air than to Beethoven at home. <laughs> well, I was ruined overnight. I was called before the regiment and my tuning fork broken before my very eyes. <laughs> oh, you can imagine what it did to me. And my wife, my wife of 50 years, good old Darby, took to a jitterbug. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I took to drink. Drink, that curse of man. Get you by the throat. Incidentally, how about my brandy? Oh, it gets you by the throat. <laughs> well, that's all I have to say. That's the sad, sad story of this empty shell you see before you. The sad story of this mere husk of a man. I have read another story about you. Just this morning. It's on a cafe note. An unpleasant scene was staged last night in the Café Samba by William Gregory, whose unwelcome presence in Rio de Janeiro should be noted by authorities. He is the American engineer and builder of the Great Tobago River Bridge, which collapsed recently, just previous to its completion. That's a lie. Collapse. How could it? It was corruption in the buying of the materials, and they put the blame on me. Sometimes things happen which no man can control, or woman. You ought to go back to your own people. I'd rather be dead than go back to the States. Look. I've caused you some trouble, and you've been very nice about it. Now, forget me. I'm not worth worrying about. But did I thank you? Oh, yes, I did. Just two things I'd like you to know. First of all, I'm a heel. And second, you're probably a darn swell girl. Any news about Santos? I heard he made it. I heard he didn't. Uh, every time somebody makes a break, you hear these stories for weeks. They made it. They didn't make it. But the only way we find out what really happened is when some... This month's mail. Come forward when your names are called. And step lively. Cabrero, Portos. La Belle, Batu, Matos, Santos. No use calling his name. There, yeah, that's all, little ones. Dismissed. What do you mean? All. It can't be. Be quiet. Do you want to go to solitary? There must have been one. You've lost it with your stupidity. I demand my letters. Well, well. The head of Renard Incorporated demands his morning mail. I tell you, I get letters every month. This month you didn't. And I hope that if your little dove found someone else, you... you <laughs> don't you know when you're dead, Renard? A woman don't wait ten years for a dead man. Not unless she's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Santos? That's what the identity tag said. It's about all that's left of it. How far did he get? Seven miles. Pretty good in that jungle. Ants or buzzards? One started, the other finished. How do you birds going to get some sense? Poor Santos. He thought he could make it this time. Poor fool. Poor fool. To try and get out of this? To get somewhere? To someone?
can't be that she's found someone else. Don't torture yourself, Paul. In the beginning, I used to think of my girl. And I learned she married. Later, I used to think of my mother. And she died. No, I don't think. I just sleep. I never thought that I could miss a human being so much. I've got to get out of this place. You, you couldn't get far. You can't beat this jungle. Forget about it, Paul. was always lucky, and I will be again. <laughs> Why are you sitting here? Why? At carnival time, we forget our personal troubles and just have a lot of fun. Why don't you forget you? It's like the new year. The heart is full of fun. The young look beautiful and the old look young. And everyone loves his neighbors. <laughs> An old American custom. Do you mind my cutting in? I do. And I don't. Well, that's the first bit of encouragement I've had in weeks. I'm absolutely in the trees now. Better come down to solid ground. Listen, madame, you can't talk that way to the Sheik of Araby. Why, my burning charger is waiting to carry us over the fiery sands. <laughs> I'm Pancho Gonzalez, Fernando Felipe, Hermoso, Ritando de Caucho. <laughs> this handsome Brazilian is no mere civilian if one were to measure his poucho. I could be the president, but I'm not the president because my last name isn't long enough. <laughs> he rides anything from a bull to a bronco providing the animal is strong enough. See, 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 all the sweet senoritas adore me. See, 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 providing you meet them before me. I'm Pancho the rough guy, the gaucho the tough guy, the bravest senor of the hour. When it comes to real trouble, he'd make a good double for young Ferdinand and the flower. Woo! See, see, see. If I say it again, I'll get seasick. See, 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 see. When I look at you, that's make me sick. I once saved the throne by myself all alone. Caught the plotters who plotted to seize it. He's Pancho Gonzalez, etc. the gaucho. If you can pronounce it, just uh, <coughs> sneeze it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'm going to break Mr. Gregory's neck. That's for Madame Irene, well... You think you're sore? Plenty. You should see the boss. <laughs> He's so green with jealousy, just like that. A very interesting conversation. Go on. Go on, I say. I am finished. Well, I'm not. I'm just beginning. How many times have I told you to keep your mouth out of the good concern you? Senor, I am in the dust. 
You don't look out, you'll be six feet under. Saying that I, a man of my age, should be jealous of a woman. <laughs> Forget each other. Why? Oh, because the world is all wrong. There is no music. There is no laughter. Because you are not good for me, and I am not good for you. seem to understand. All the pump broke down. No water ran through the pipes. The cattle will die. Well, why don't you get somebody to fix it? Not on these ranchos, senor. What we need is a real engineer. Engineer? Who's that engineer? My credentials, sir. Graduate with it honors. Everybody predicted great things for me. I drew plans for a bridge across the Atlantic. Everyone says perfect. Wait for a low tide and we'll start building. At your service, sir. Just let me build something. That's all I ask. Let me build something. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I think you got something there. All right. The job is yours. <laughs> I knew you'd come to me. The man who spanned the Atlantic will go. Or no, won't go. Not till I get that whiskey, huh? OK, thank you. Take him to the ranch. Build and keep him there. Build it. <laughs> uh-oh. Mustn't drink that stuff anymore. Senor, if you are awake, I'll take you to the pump. What pump? The pump, Senor Roberto, hire you to fix. Well, bring your pump to me. That's hardly possible, senor. He weighs 40 tons. I don't want to be inquisitive, but would you mind telling me who I am? You said you were an engineer. If I said that, I lied. I used to be an engineer. I'm through. <laughs> I couldn't build a wheelbarrow today. See? So you get somebody else, and tell me the way to get back to town. <laughs> Car leaves every other day. Well, I'll walk then.
But, Senor, we must have more water. There's sickness in the house. My children, fever. I'm sorry. One to each family, Senora. Why don't you give her a little more? You want to be responsible? Senor, you think we like to do this? We got to. All right, give her my share. I don't drink water anyway. Oh, this thing's no good. It's not a question of repairing it. It's a question of a complete irrigation system. Are there any streams in those mountains? Si, sí, senor. There's no two. You got a reservoir? We have some wells, but it only lasts 48 hours at the most. All right. We'll repair this temporarily. But what you really need is a dam. You can close up, Dirk, as soon as you are through. Thank you, sir. Randy. I'm sorry, old timer, but the bar's closed. Have some water if you like. I need brandy. I want brandy, and that's what you'll serve me. Listen, old man. If it's help you need in getting out of here... I don't need any help. Paul does. Paul? Paul Renard. Did you say brandy? Good night, Dirk. Don't work too hard. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. That's the trouble. What do you know about Paul? We were colleagues, chained together on the same lumber gang. How did you get out? Served the full sentence. <laughs> they want me to die on my own time. Maybe I'll fool them. All right, now. What did you say about Paul? There won't be any Paul if he doesn't get out. It's crazy. He wants to break loose. He thinks he can do it if he had some help from the outside. Yeah? How can that be arranged? Here, yeah, some more brandy. Oh. There are ways, and I know them. Aren't you going to take me home, Dirk? Why, of course, sure. Oh, perhaps you're still busy. Well, I won't be long, madam. Would you mind waiting in the car? Please, hurry. I'm tired. Hmm. Now I understand. <laughs> I saw her picture outside. Madame Irene, yeah? <laughs> I understand. You were telling me there are ways. I'd be heading for the nearest saloon. If you're heading for a saloon that brought me here. <laughs> the way I figured it out don't make much difference. Every time night comes when I was free, I'd say to myself, what'll I do tonight? Now I don't have to worry anymore. I know what I'm going to do every night. <laughs> it's all in the breaks. Hey, you two, report to Rocco right away. What does he want to see us for? We ain't done nothing. Oh, uh, come on. Want to see us, Rocco? Sure. It's always a pleasure to see Renard Incorporated. Now, that pleasure is always mutual. There's a package here for you. You know what's in it? Certainly. A saw and a code in cipher. Something for you, too. For me? I wonder who could be. Let me see it. It's for my uncle. My uncle in Marseille. Why, he hasn't sent me anything since, since, and, and now he's remembering me again. Uh, can I open it? Oh, no, Rocco must do that. He must examine everything. Take it and get out. Both of you. Go on, get out of here. Remember me telling you about my uncle in Marseille? Yes, I remember. Here, we're going to exchange gifts.
get ready to go down to the site of the dam, let us ask the good Padre to bless the project that has been so ingeniously planned by our young engineer, Senor Gregory. O oh God, by whose name all things are sanctified, pour forth thy blessing on this water. Benedictionem, benedictionem, benedictionem. My friends, I'm sure we'd all like to show our appreciation for the man whose energy and brilliance has shown us that we have riches all around us and taught us how to gather them in. I call for three cheers for Senor Gregory. Senor Gregory, I wonder if you'd be kind enough to sign the registry in our little church. We like to keep a record of our notable friends who visit us here. I'll be glad to. Perhaps Madame would sign also? You'll find it in the vestry. missed you terribly. Yet you worked hard and with success to... Oh, I was grateful for the job. It filled my days and occupied my mind. But nevertheless, I missed you. I kept seeing your face before me. One minute it was there, and the next you were swallowed up in the crowd. But I found you again. Phil, I... Uh, I must get back. Why did you come? I had to. Berta told me that you were doing miracles, that you were a changed man. I wanted to find out for myself. Oh, I waited for weeks until I could pull myself together. Weeks till I thought I had the right to speak to you. What's standing between us? Renard? Yes. How can you let him? He's wrecked everyone's life, including your own. Do you still love him? Bill, you can't pin me down by forcing me to answer. There are all kinds of love. Renard fascinated me. And whatever he was to the world, he was good to me. Although sometimes he did frighten me horribly. And yet there was some kind of terrible fascination even in that. But that's all over. I don't love him anymore. Well, then why don't you free yourself from him? If I deserted Paul when he needed me most, I'd always be miserable. Oh, let's face this, Bill. There is no way out. I'm trapped but I'm not going to let you be trapped with me. Is that your final word? It must be. Think we've been missed? No, not yet. We can still turn back. Remember what happened to Santos? Santos was a fool. Don't worry, I've arranged everything. It's wonderful the way you do things. You must have some great friends on the outside. I have myself. Come on, we've still got two miles to do today. Miles and miles and days and days. Maybe I can't last. You've got to last, Mushy. Think of it. When we get out of this, we'll be free. Come on. Mushy, no Paul. 72 hours. That gives Renard Incorporated and his accomplice just time enough to reach the swamp and change their minds. But it may be too late. My guess is they'll be here on their knees tomorrow begging to be taken back. Maybe yes, maybe no. Did you ever see a pair of skeletons walk? <laughs> No use. Get your breath, you'll be all right. I'm through. You go on. I can't cut through the rest of this jungle alone. It'll take the both of us. Come on.
place. The place for all I can. Yes, my uh, Only a few more miles ahead of us and a bath. Clean warm water. Soap that is soothing to the skin. The tub all by yourself. Well, I never had those. Listen, Miss Mushy. Fresh linen. Clothes that fit you and food. Do you realize what it will mean to sit down to a civilized meal with a bottle of wine properly chilled? But honest, Paul, I, I never had those. Come on, Mushy. Hey, go away. We ain't dead yet. You want something to eat? No. I just want to sit here. We really got through the worst of it. Yes, we really got through the worst of it. I just want to sleep. Wake me up in a hundred years. Paul, I ain't done nothing to you. On the contrary, you've done me a great favor. In a few years, I could have gone back home. Dirk! Dirk! Chief! 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 Oh, Chief! I'm here, Chief. Oh, just look at you. Oh. I've been hugging this coat for the last three weeks. I thought you'd never turn up. Where's the boat? Just down the river, not far from here. Oh, but, Chief, you're tired. Don't think you ought to rest? No, no, no need to rest. Let's go on. You, in your message, you mentioned another man. Where is he? He couldn't make it. Irene, you 
must lift yourself out of this moon. I know, Roberto. I'm trying to. I'll have to go on in a few minutes. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. I want to. I think it would be better for me if I did. Come in. You know, then? I won't say anything now. No. Please, not now. Mary Marine. Come back here. After my number. Just two minutes. Any woman should be able to dress in two minutes. In what country, my friend? <laughs> to say to me? I... What can I say? I... I'm so overcome. Are you? Then I think you might have given me a warmer greeting. A wife who hasn't seen her husband for such a long time and who... Dirk tells me has been able to fully amuse herself. I didn't amuse myself. I fell in love. I couldn't help it, Paul. I tried not to. You are married to me. I know it. You can't possibly have forgotten everything that we meant to each other. I haven't. I don't know what it means to me to hold you in my arms again. Let me go. Why am I so repulsive to you? Yes, when I feel you touching me, let me go. You think that now. You think it. But you'll forget this man. You'll forget him. No, I won't, Paul. You're utterly wrong. Right or wrong, you're going to stay married to me. We're leaving Rio tomorrow. I'm starting on a new career. With you, I'll be on top of the world again. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can... Don't let anyone in. Irene. Open, please. It's Bill. I must see you at once. Don't let him in. Tell him to go away. Bill! Yes? I can't see you now. 
Go away, please. Irene, please forgive me for barging in like this, but I was worried about you. There's a commotion outside. Police, official cars, all sorts of rumors. I just wanted to make sure you were safe, that's all. I'll worry about my wife's safety. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Paul Renard. Chief, let's make a run for it. The police are closing in, and they've orders to kill. Now, we haven't a chance, neither of us, if we don't make a move now. Now, please, come on. It's annoying being hunted like this, isn't it, Dirk? But I escaped once before, and I'll do it again. You ready, Irene? You're going with me. Bill, don't let him. I won't. I've lost her. That's it, Chief. You've lost her. Now face it. But there's still time for you and I. Now, please, will you come, Chief? Come on. Do you know, Dirk, for the first time in my life, I'm tired. I'm really tired. I wish I could say bless you, my children, but I can't, because I'm going to kill you. <coughs> Don't be mad, Chief. You mustn't have any more murders on your conscience. Let's make a break while we've still got a chance. Now, oh, come on, Chief, please. Have I lost you too, Dirk? Now, if we don't go, they'll surely kill you now. I'm not afraid to die. I don't want to live anymore. I've lost her, Dirk. Don't you understand? I've lost her. They won't be killing me when they shoot. I'm dead already. But before I go, out of my way, Dirk, or I'll kill you too. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief. We had our chance, a slight chance. But you've lost it. I've lost it. You better take her away from here. Because when I kick that door open, there may be some firing. And it won't be safe for anybody. Irene. It's out of everyone's hands. Mm -hmm.